If the two forces F1 and F2 are added together, what is the magnitude and direction angles of the resultant force R? This is the second example for the vector components main video. The link to that video and other examples are in the description below. Notice that I have intentionally labeled the z-axis going up instead of down, which doesn't follow the right-hand rule. Even though this shouldn't be the case, I'm doing it to show that as long as you're consistent with your frame of reference, vector addition or later on sum of forces will also be consistent and correct. To find this resultant vector r, we first need to find its components in the x, y, and z axes. To do that, we need the x, y, and z components of both vectors f1 and f2. The x component of f1 can be found if we first find the hypotenuse on the horizontal plane and use it to find the side opposite to the 40 degree angle. Notice that the component of this force is going in the negative x direction. The y component of f1 will be the adjacent side to the 40 degree angle of the same hypotenuse on the horizontal plane, and this is a positive component. Finally, the z component is the opposite side of the 20 degree angle. For force F2, we see that it is located on the vertical plane XZ and therefore the Y component is zero. The X component is the adjacent side to the 50 degree angle or the side opposite to the 40 degree angle. Either one works. In the same way, the Z component is either the opposite side to the 50 degree angle or the adjacent side to the 40 degree angle. And just like the X component of F1, the Z component of F2 is negative. With the values for the components of F1 and F2, we can find the components of the resulting force R and with them and the Pythagorean theorem, the magnitude of the R vector. By locating those components graphically, we see that angle theta can be found with the inverse of tangent and the X and Y components. Rx is the side opposite to theta and Ry is the adjacent side to theta. Substituting the values, we find the angle theta and for angle phi, we can use the side opposite to phi and the side adjacent to phi, which is the hypotenuse AB. This hypotenuse can be found with Rx and Ry, and we use the positive value of Rz, since in this case it's just the side of a triangle. These three values would fully describe vector R, but it is also common in textbooks to find the coordinate directional angles which are the angles that the vector forms between it and the three Cartesian axes. And since in this case we have R as the hypotenuse and Rx, Ry, and Rz as the adjacent side to that angle, we find these angles alpha, beta, and gamma with the inverse of the cosine function, which relates the adjacent side with the hypotenuse. For more examples related to vector components, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.